I've been rechecking some clips, right? Um, the clips mainly from the Skankfest Fat K thing. And um, I'm going to actually go over a few things that I forgot I didn't mention before. Maybe in my original reaction, I put it up there, but I don't feel I don't feel bothered to put that re reaction up there. So I'm just going to talk about it again, because why not? It's fun. Number one thing I want to speak about in general is Brendan Schaub's arrogance. Arrogance in terms of early on in his career for some reason again this is a really strange thing because i remember he spoke about this before i think he spoke about this in the episode of the fire and the kid he mentioned on the fire and the kid once right that um he he was advised by brian callen by joe rogan and by somebody else i forgot who was close to him at the time not to take the showtime deal do you know that that's the law the law is Brian Callen and Joe Rogan told Brendan, don't take the Showtime deal. Don't do the You Be Surprised comedy special. You're too early in your career. You need more years under your belt. You need more experience. You need to get funnier and then maybe record your first special. He didn't listen to those guys because guess what? He thought they were hating. He thought they were jealous of his career and how quickly he ascended. That's why they were telling him not to do it. Like they secretly wanted a special themselves. That's how crazy arrogant he was back then. So I'm going to play a clip here from the Skankfest video that kind of speaks about, you know, that kind of highlights a little bit of that. And then we're obviously going to react to some of the things that he's saying in real time. So let's play this clip now. Oh, do you what think it, it's yeah. more of Brian? <laughs> What's that? Well, I, I say it only because like, look, there's like a zillion things like, you're a former fighter. You came in with a name to comedy, so you got fast-tracked yep. in so many ways and put in the public eye. And then people sit behind keyboards, and again, you're the guy in their mind who, like, Bullies fucks their... Yeah, yeah, fucks their... So there's, like... Again, I hate this mischaracterization, in my personal opinion. This mi mischaracterization of people like myself and others who laugh and point at Brendan for being unfunny and for being a bit of a douchebag, it's really insulting to our intelligence to say that people out there are just jealous of him because he fucks girls or he could have fucked your girl or my girl and he looks like somebody that could have bullied you in school. It's such an oversimplification of the problem. I think part of the problem is this, and I think it's probably a little bit of a parasocial relationship involved in there also there's a little bit of tism involved in there also because you know we're way too invested in this stuff as am i but in my defense this is my reality tv right i'm never going to be shamed out of watching this stuff if you guys can sit there and watch my 500 pound live 90 day fiance i don't take piss at anybody i, I don't i don't um I don't um, TV shame anyone. People watch 90 Day Fiance, My 500 Pound Life, um, Love After Dark, um, that one with the people who were legitimately redacted. I forgot which one, what that was called. It was a show about people that had Down syndrome. I think Love on a Spectrum or something. Like shows that you probably shouldn't be spending your free time watching. There was that show about the little people that people were watching for a bit too. Do you remember that show? Like following all these women that were like born with dwarfism and stuff and it was following them and their relationship and stuff. Like stuff that I would never spend my time free time watching cool i don't watch that my version of this is following the stuff connected with the bapa verse and stuff connected with the jerry verse so you're never gonna shame me out of covering this stuff because it's fucking funny i don't give a fuck what anyone says i find it hilarious but i think we have ourselves to blame we have ourselves to blame and we also have to blame these comedians because for the longest time when i first i don't know about you guys maybe you guys are different i never knew anything about stand-up comedy before i listened to podcasts about before I listened to comedy-based podcasts. Let me repeat that again. I didn't know anything about stand-up comedy before I started listening to comedy-based podcasts. I didn't know anything. Yes, I knew what stand-up was. I may have watched a couple specials on TV when they came on and stuff. Cool. But I didn't know anything about the business and what goes on behind it. Like I legitimately was one of those people who thought like stand-ups would go on stage and just freestyle whatever they were doing on stage material wise that's something they just made up on the spot i didn't know they practiced bits i didn't know they fucking did different materials in different places they worked on stuff they honed it they, re they, re they rehearsed it i didn't know any of that stuff i didn't know there was such a thing as crowd work like i didn't know all that stuff i just thought it was all the same thing cool whatever these guys taught us through hours and hours of listening to their content they taught us that there's a certain standard of being a stand-up comedian right they drummed into us the thing about sets and rep sets and reps they jumped into us the thing about the treble runs and stuff they jumped into us the idea that you can't do a comedy special in your first five years or six years or whatever it may be they jumped into us that you shouldn't record your first two years and put up on social media they jumped into us that you shouldn't be a joke thief they jumped into us all this stuff right they drummed into us as like standards for comedians so again where we are like we've been told this 
we are being told this, myself included, you're being told all these things against your will, right? Listen to Joe Rogan's podcast when he gets a comedian on. It's fucking, excru- it's fucking excruciating. As much as I love Rogan, having to sit, hear him pontificate about the business of fucking stand-up comedy, it makes me want to legitimately drive into fucking, uh, uh, you know, traffic. I swear to God, it's so horrible. But they tell us what the standard is. They tell us what people in their business respect and what they don't respect, and we listen. Then Brendan comes along and he does the complete opposite of whatever they've been telling us. He comes in, he gets fast tracked, he's, com- he's, he's performing at all the big clubs that they talk about that are prestigious, Laugh Factory, Comedy Store, Ice House at the time. He's got a comedy special in the first two years. He's, he puts it out, it's fucking terrible. And we're all looking there as fans and viewers like, hold on, this is shit. Why aren't they calling this out? They call out everything else being terrible. Why are they calling out this thing that's being terrible? Why aren't they fucking giving us a fucking lecture about the craft of comedy and the business of it and shit? Why are they ignoring it? Why are they pretending like this doesn't this isn't terrible? And then they have the guts to try and gaslight us, the public, into thinking that we are the problem. Oh, suddenly you're the haters. You're the trolls. You're this, you're that. It's like, bruh, you told us what the standard was. Yeah, exactly. You told us there's only 1,000, exactly, as Logan's cartel said. You told us there's only 1,000 good comedians out there, as Rogan would say. Who, who, again, Rogan's statistic is funny because his 1,000 top comedians is only American comedians. He doesn't really count English ones, probably, or he doesn't really count non-English speaking ones. So all these comedians that he knows only are the ones that, you know, perform in America and shit. Cool, whatever. You tell us what the standard is. We see somebody that doesn't meet the standard, who falls way short of it. We call it out. We laugh at it. And then you gaslight us or he gaslights us and make us seem like we're the bad guys. Okay, cool, man. Cool. Whatever you say. Fuck this pretty motherfucker. You know, he can't I, be I, funny. I don't have a problem with that. They that's, start with hate. But that's that what stuff it is. I get. That stuff sure. I get. When they go, when they make it personal, that's that's where it hurts my feelings. Oh, no, for sure. If, I'm you saying, but can clown the comedy, my fight picks. All it does things. hurt his feelings. But when it, when it, when it, I love how he says that the only things that he does wrong or the only things that people can legitimately criticize are his comedy and his fight picks. That's hilarious. He's only got to the point now of accepting that he's terrible at fight picks. And the fight picks thing is more so because it's the contrast, right? He's a former UFC fighter. He got paid mega bucks by Showtime to do UFC. That's the one thing also I think for Brendan, he has to take a lot of kind of responsibility for. That Showtime check must have been so sweet. To get that on top of what he's already getting paid from cast, what he already gets from AdSense, what he already gets on ads, he must have been making so much money back in the day. And for some reason, he pissed it all up the wall and he didn't take it seriously. He turned up on the short show or before that when it's called Below the Belt, not do any research, read about fight cards the day of via Wikipedia, respond to news that Chin just reading off to him to first time there, do no analysis and watch no tape, do nothing. And then you throw out his fight picks as if they're like informed. What's the point? You're a former fighter too. Don't you want to have a little bit more pride in your work? And that's why people would clown him. Like, how do you have this amazing role and this amazing job and position, yet you're doing the bare minimum? Like, why would you do that? Just do a, a little bit of effort and you'll be fucking fine. He doesn't do that. Cool. But he's only now realized or accepted that he has terrible fight picks because, you know, there's just too much fucking, um, there's just too much of a track record. And there was this one particular guy, I think, on the Fire and the Kids sub, I forgot who he was, but one particular user, I think, started betting the opposite of his fight picks or whoever he would pick to win in a UFC fight card, this user would just pick the opposite. And he made like a bunch of money. Not crazy, but he obviously made a lot of money. So it proved that, oh, this guy's picks are fucking horrendous. And then the comedy thing is like, for the, for the longest time, you couldn't criticize his comedy. There was no criticism of it. And now suddenly he's accepting it because the, the the proof is the proof is in the pudding. You'd be surprised and Gringo Pappy put a put aside your dislike for the person. They are probably two of the worst things ever put out in the history of fucking content creation. Like how anybody could put those things out and be proud of them is fucking beyond me, to be honest. Especially considering the gap in between them. I think you'd be surprised came within like a year and a half of him doing comedy. And then Gringo Pappy came like what, five or six years after? And I will say people in the chat disagree with me but i honestly do think you'd be surprised is better than gringo Pappy. but they're not even that far apart and they're meant to be six years apart in terms of experience and whatever it may be six years apart and your first special is still better than your second one that's a damning indictment so you kind of have to accept people will dunk your comedy because the you know the proof is in the pudding you come for the family yeah but by the way hold on that's fucking awesome that you just you admitted it, it, it and also the family thing i'm not too sure about that can you blame Unique for clipping a stream where Brendan looks like he's handing a note to some girl 
on a live stream is that really unix fault the bgl stuff is maybe where it crosses the line right as much as i like bgl and i think he deserves his money you know bgl should get his money i really do hope and pray that he does because i've been in his position before too many times than i like would like because of other places i worked at and because of my fucking tendency to work for startups like it's a fucking it's it's a poison chalice isn't it it really is like startups for the most part allow you with less experience to get a job right usually startups would kind of get people like myself who have like really spotty experience like i don't really have a good work cv because i don't really stay in places too long enough to really build up any kind of you know leeway and stuff and experience or whatever maybe so because i've got a spotty cv and because i jump around a lot startups are a good place to go because they usually hire anybody that's got a bit of you know a little bit of fucking um drive a little bit of common sense whatever they're gonna hire you but then the other flip side of it is that startups aren't corporations they are run by regular people like me and you right they're not the rum they're not like big corporations that have been around for like hundreds of years and shit so they could go under in any moment so those times where they go under sometimes you're paid at risk so i've been in bgl's position so i hope he gets his money but the bgl stuff you could argue went too far right him releasing the baddies and addies or the addies and baddies fucking texas releasing the d i didn't say, did he release dms no he released details about what happened i think he posted a, a, a message about some girl who said that brendan hit a rap or something i don't know whatever all that stuff's a bit too far but can you really blame unique if he clips a live stream a public live stream that featured brendan dc mike tyson you know doing some live stream for the super bowl can you really blame unique for clipping a stream that's already available on youtube that shows brendan in the background handing some girl a note that's not him getting personal that's you being dumb that's you being reckless really and truly let's be fair your feelings yeah. and it does hurt her feelings you assholes yeah. we yeah. read we read the comments it's gonna be a group hug he's gonna you guys line up and he's gonna hug everybody i cry <laughs> uh, like this with his look, I, 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 you guys I, get to hug him i think here's the thing comedy fans in general are fucking nerds right most most comedy fans i'm a comedy fan dude we didn't have an oh, easy nerds. path i think the perception on you is that you've had an easy path you're you're a good looking dude you're in exactly there we go he he, he missed it the perception on him he's had his, he's had an easy path and he's got a soft and he's been treated um, with kid gloves by other comedians when they rip other people like imagine the Carlos Mencia thing is a bad example because I think Carlos Mencia is a very unlikable person aside from the jokes when you hear him talk about his past experience and how he got kind of kicked out of comedy you can tell he's not the easiest person to like Carlos Mencia right bad example but look at how they rallied around getting Carlos Mencia out of here clearly they do that they can do that if somebody's not a not likable guy so somebody is maybe a likable because that's the thing brendan's very clever at he's likable enough to the people that matter in comedy you're you're an athlete and then you got into comedy and you sort of had it kind of easy yeah That's such an easy, easy path fist fighting mirko krokop you see dave smith doing what dave smith does well dave smith knows where his bread, bread is buttered dave smith actually is really good at um maintaining his relationship with joe i think out of all those guys he did it the best when i think there was a period when Luis j gomez wasn't on joe rogan because it was pretty clear that rogan didn't like Luis j gomez for a period of time and now we can see the reason why which is good anyway in brendan's case is that joe rogan is a good friend he wasn't allowing Luis j gomez to come on his show because he knew Luis j gomez was getting at brendan a lot on you know on his on his show and stuff throwing out little fucking disses and shit so rogan said okay you're not on my show anymore because you're insulting my friend cool no problem but big j if i'm not mistaken he would go on the rogan show and from time to time he'd bring up Luis j gomez's name i remember it precisely a couple episodes and rogan would purposely pretend like he didn't hear it or skip over it dave smith never once brought up Luis j gomez's name he knew rogan didn't fuck with him so he didn't mention it like he knows where his bread is buttered so it's no surprise that he came in there with a save you know just as it was about to get introspective it's about to get more funny because i don't believe that they should have went up there and tried to rip into these guys like firing the kid users on the for on the subreddit there no of course not but just poke a little bit tease a little bit get a bit introspective make some jokes out of it don't just keep going on there and just turning it into a suck off that's what it was essentially brendan was standing up there with his trousers around his ankle and these guys were just going one after the other sucking him off for five seconds in an eternal loop and while fucking Callan was doing his, I'm a man. Big up Red Bar. I'm a man. Like, get over yourself, bro.
Yeah. What did Dude, you, you just have? Yeah, well, so you, you just guys skirted through open mics. Yeah. Foot I had, I had no, to do no, open no, mics. No, but, but, and this guy just fist no, on no, GoPro no. Brendan Shaw walking through the raindrops again. <laughs> No, but but you're right. But as far as the comedy, like I didn't anticipate any of it. I I I I, and I wish I was smarter to see it. Because when my agent goes, "Hey, Showtime wants to give a special," I'm like, "Oh my God, I'm gonna be just like them." I didn't realize. And this. I tried to talk him out of it. He, him, you and Rogan. Again, how does that make any sense? So he didn't realize that taking that Showtime deal was a bad thing to do. Even though his best friends in comedy, the ones that got him into comedy, Rogan and Callan, told him not to do it. You see how he just lies just so easily. I didn't know that it would be this bad and it would be a bad thing. And I also d didn't know, but I didn't know, but then Callan says, no, but we told you not to do it. I love this like victim thing that, I, that he's doing because it hasn't turned out well. That's the thing. If his career turned out well, so if his career, career turned out well, he wouldn't be doing this show and he also wouldn't be saying these things because it hasn't worked out the way he would like. Now, all of a sudden, I'm the victim. I should have known this kind of faux sympathy thing, right? Come on, bro. I tried to talk about it. We almost like, got in a physical fight. And then over I was like, oh, they're just haters. But then. But well, then, what happens is you start killing. You're, you're a young comic. Your audience is there to see you. So you're doing well. You're like, I can do a fucking Showtime special. And then you realize the people at Showtime have no fucking clue about, about comedy. comedy. And I didn't realize the backlash. And then, but even like my first set was at the comedy store. I didn't realize how big of a deal that was. And I'm like, oh, everyone's going to dig this. I'm at the comedy store. That's a lie. That's a lie. I don't believe it. Everybody around him. All the people were fucking... Do you remember back in the day? I, I'm so happy it stopped now because I don't feel like... I listen to a lot of the Rogan podcasts and I don't even hear him mention the mothership as much as he used to mention the comedy store. Have you realised? Have you guys realised that? He doesn't speak about the mothership as much as he used to speak about the comedy store. Oh, the comedy store is so good right now. The comedy store is the best it's ever been. Oh, the comedy store, the comedy store, the green room, the hangs in the car park. They would be eulogizing about the comedy store every single fucking episode. It was nauseating. I get it though, don't get me wrong, because I've got my spots like the Berghain, that famous club in Berlin that I fucking go to all the time. I know what it's like, so I get it. But he would have known how important the comedy club was, the comedy store was, because of how often those guys spoke about it and how much they sucked off fucking Mitzi Shaw, Dick, fucking, you know, the hang at the back, what you call it, um, Paulie Shaw, the things that happened in the dark room, whatever. They would suck that fucking place off and eulogize it and talk about fucking, you know, old stories and share how it was amazing, who passed through, who got turned down. Um, you know, Jerry Seinfeld, he didn't get passed. They, he knew. He knew how important it was. It was a big deal. He wore it on his chest, which is a good thing. But then you can't turn around and say, all of a sudden, I didn't know the comedy store was that big. I was so naive. I was only 16. Bro, you're in your mid-30s when you started comedy. You would have known what the comedy store was about, especially if your best friends are Brian Cannon and Joe Rogan. Come on, bro. Let's be real. But I should have never been there. The Showtime special. I should have never gotten that. Right. I, I thought most comics would be like, dude, for two years, this is awesome. How does that make any sense? I should never have got the Showtime special. I should never have been at the comedy store. But I thought the comedians, the, my fellow stand-up comedians would have been happy for me. That doesn't make any sense, right? Don't I remember it correctly? There's a story, if I remember before, there was a story of Brendan turning up to the comedy store. Maybe it was in his pickup truck days when he had the F Ford F-150, the famous one that he allegedly um, offered um, Annie Lederman a truck walk to. There's a story out there that he went to the comedy store and I guess parking is only for people that are past or something if that's again i'm not too sure if this is true and i got my law right but supposedly the comedy store parking space is very small and they only let people that are past to park inside there but then he took his big car in there because he was, he was performing on a show with rogan and his big car took up like many spaces and it was a thing that people were like oh my god look at this guy he's not even funny he's not past and he's bringing this massive car that takes two spaces or three spaces in there that shows already you know what i mean how he was basically acting when he was in there so i don't believe this 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 um this foes contrition oh it was all bad and i didn't know and i was so innocent come on man you're not that naive no i knew i knew it was and gonna I was happen like, Whoa. and also how can you not expect comedians who've been working in industry for look at lucia gomez's face that's the face that you make when somebody when you're trying to fuck a hot girl and you start laughing at her jokes that aren't even funny. That's the face that you make. He should have known that the comedians in the comedy store were never going to be okay with, or not going to be okay. They were going to have a problem or have an attitude about how fast he ascended.